a couple of days back, there was this story on Business Insider's cryptocurrency page where we heard about the Binance CEO CZ spending 80% of his time thinking about regulation. Now, we're going to better him. We intend to speak 100% of this show's time talking about regulation, and it's going to be fun. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. I'm Ashwin Raghunath from Business Insider India, and we have two gentlemen who are debuting on our webinar series. Ramesh Kailasan is the CEO of India Tech. Now, India Tech are the folks who do an incredible amount of groundwork on which startups and innovators can do what they're great at, and that's innovate. Now, what they do is they represent tech startups, investors, and they do an incredible amount of policy work to create the right conducive environment for them to grow. So that's India Tech, and uh, Ramesh is their CEO. Ramesh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Ashwin, for having me today. And we have Aritra Sarkil, Aritra is the Director of Public Policy and Government Affairs at Wazirx. And Wazirx is, of course, India's leading crypto exchange. Uh, gentlemen, it's a delight to have you join us here today. Good to, good to talk here, man, Ashwin. Uh, Ramesh, hello from the other side of the country. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. We're getting rain. So I'm getting, I'm, I'm bringing rain on. Oh, on this discussion on crypto, let's see where it goes with this. With the next <laughs> you know, on that note, I need to tell you, I mean, I was talking with a couple of jokes about um, us having this policy discussion on cryptos. And uh, one of them had two very important questions, which have nothing to do with your work. And they wanted to say, you know, this gentleman, Aritra, we need to ask him how many emails he gets and how much, how many hours of sleep he manages to get with, with the portfolio of work that he does. So you want me to let, you want to let me know? <laughs> So if I uh, come on, let, let I'll be honest with you guys. So the 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 kind of stuff that I'm doing right now, it's uh, if if you just go by the designation, the kind of stuff I'm doing right now, I, I get a lot of heat from a lot of corners. I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions that I can't openly tell you guys in the public forum. But it's it's something that, I mean, over the years, this is something that is really fascinating because there is there is a lot to learn. Like this is one field. Mm -hmm. Think of it. Literally think of it like how mainframe computing, after mainframe computing, what happened with the personal computer space. Imagine that space in the 80s and the early 90s when that was happening. Uh -huh. there, there, there are a lot of us who, like I code, I code in Solidity, by the way, and I've been coding in Solidity for a long time now. Now, when I look at that platform and when I want to uh, make people understand, like imagine translating a line of code and what blockchain does to people uh -huh. who are building things uh, uh, for uh, people in the industry from all the sites, from neutral bodies, from companies, product companies, exchange companies. I get a lot, I get asked a lot of questions, but one question invariably, in, apart from all the serious questions that I, I expect some really serious questions coming to me, I, I, I explain this, this is what China is doing, this is what US is doing, what should we do, what should, what should Indian bodies do? But then somewhere over there, I'll get one question every day. Right now my email is open in front of me, there are two pop-ups that have come to me which says, uh, Aritra, uh, or how my friends in Calcutta call me, Aritra, hey, what should I invest in? Tell no, should I buy Bitcoin? Should I buy Ethereum? I'm like, there is an entire world. Come, sit with me, spend half an hour every day. I'll pay for you. Sit with me, I'll explain to you how this entire world functions. But 60% of my queries are that. But again, on a serious note, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, good chatter, I would say, from all the sides, from the government of India, the central government, the state governments, uh, equal stakeholders, other exchange folks, product companies in here, product blockchain companies in, in, in Southeast Asia, in North America, and in parts from and parts in Africa. Uh, I, I have, I've, I've been having some insane conversations, I'll be honest, things that I, I, I'm like a kid. I'm, for me, it's like I'm this two-year-old kid who's just writing the, no, two-year old doesn't write, sorry, a 10-year-old kid who is writing down notes. So yesterday, I, and I'm not naming that person, but yesterday I was talking to this gentleman from, uh, I'll tell you, uh, South, uh, a particular country in South America, uh, and they wanted to do something. And they were asking me how to explain. So I was literally explaining things to few product guys over there. There were the government folks, or the gentlemen also, who wanted to understand, hey, how do you do this? How do I do this part of my government on a blockchain? Hey, how does virtual currency come on top of this? So, and then they would tell you their civic problems and how that uh, gets solved by crypto. So yeah, so, long story short, it's it's more than question. It's every question is like a learning thing. Even, even when I don't know anything, I'll just go research up, I'll call developers. Does this actually happen? I mean, is this even possible? It's mad. It's it's one of the best couple of years of my life where it's it's like a kid who's learning. I get massive questions, emails, calls, messages throughout the night from everywhere in the world. But the best part is, and I'll I'll be blunt on this and honest about this. Everybody is open to learn. Everybody is open to, from bureaucrats, from 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 diplomats, everywhere. Like, how does this function? What does it do? 
So that's a great, great space to be in. Right? You're just you're learning and you're help, helping people understand how this space functions. So I, mean, I don't know what the future entails, but that's what's happening now. Well, at least you can do a lot of research, but Ramesh, I mean, for you, it's pretty much like an open, clean canvas to play around, right? In the sense that when you're talking about startups, that market has matured over the past two decades. But when it comes to things like cryptocurrency, I mean, are you guys at sea? Is this a good problem to have? Is this a problematic problem to deal with? How are you looking at it from the India tech space? If you look at the, the space that we are representing, I mean, uh, I would put equally all of them in the same bucket. Now, on one side, I have startups who are coming with disruptive technologies, who are, who are day in and day out dabbling, trying to connect the traditional seller and the traditional buyer in, 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 in a sense. I mean, that's what most of them to start with do as a business model. And then you have those disruptive technologies coming in. So each of that is looked at differently. I mean, uh, this is something where I keep telling that uh, when, when you start looking at regulation, regulation is like a frame, I would say. And, and if somebody says that, okay, uh, you give the frame in advance and I'll innovate, then you will get the size of the frame as innovation. But if you innovate and then I build a frame which is the size of the room or a size of a warehouse, then your innovation size goes up. But if you look at the startup space, tremendous amount of challenges sector by sector. So I would, I would actually equate all of them in the same bucket. Then comes the next area which we took up, which was gaming, online gaming. And again, a phenomenal area where People are literally going crazy saying, okay, is it online betting, gambling, or is it skill-based and you have court rulings coming in, but no serious re regulation or legislation coming somewhere anywhere from the government on, on that particular front. And then you've got crypto, which is, which is like, I mean, these are all like, I would say, hopping and jumping, leapfrogging into the next level of innovation as if the regulator wasn't done with the startup space. Uh, now you're dealing with gam gaming and then you're dealing with crypto. So it's like fun space for regulation for the simple reason that this is not a solution. There is no solution that exists anywhere in the world. Every regulator around the world is still grappling with the same thing. Some of them are trying to understand. Some of them are trying to grapple it. It's like all of them touching and saying, okay, this is four pillars and a rope uh, when actually it should be the elephant, right? So, so each of them is defining it in their own way. And for us who are in the regulation space, this is like greenfield, brownfield, uh, all of it. Uh, in, in some cases, you are retrofitting old laws on me. In some cases, we are saying, please retrofit the old law on me, like we are doing for crypto. So on uh, the, the paradox is that on one side, I'm negotiating and telling the government, why are you treating a cab hailing as a, a taxi service? On the other side, I'm saying, why are you treating crypto as a currency? Treat it as an asset. And, and, and bring the regulations which already exist, bring the existing regulations and apply it on us and we are cool. On the other side, I'm saying, why are you putting old regulations on us? So it is like I'm, I'm changing 180 degrees on every discussion on each topic. So I might meet the same regulator in government and I might talk one language for one industry, another language for another industry. And I think that's the beauty of this evolving landscape, right? I mean, the regulation has to catch up. Regulation does give legitimacy to some extent. Uh, Non-existence of uh, regulation is also termed as, I mean, uh, I, I mean, if you take the case of crypto, I mean, somebody asked me this question saying, how do you see crypto today? And, and my take was that you had this animal around, uh, there was a ban, it was caged, and the cage was lifted. Now it is roaming around in your, in your backyard, in your front yard, in your street, and nobody knows what this animal is, whereas rest all animals have a name to it. And, and they are all regulated by an existing thing. So uh, for RBI, it's like, okay, there's a foreign body moving around. For the government, okay, let's see how this foreign body behaves. How does it, uh, I mean, what, what are the mistakes it does? Let's wait and watch. Maybe that's the time, the opportune time, we'll throw a regulation and say, hey, you misbehaved a lot. So you are you're pushed to this zone or, or you behaved well and maybe you stay in this zone. So it's, it's like an evolving space for us as, as, as people in the regulatory space or people dabbling with the government. And, and as uh, was pointed out, I mean, we also get crazy kind of uh, questions coming our way. Oh, uh, I mean, like on one side, your friends and uh, family asking, oh, you are writing on crypto, which means that this is serious stuff. Maybe time to invest. Or, or you have the government guys sometimes coming and saying, why are you putting your head in crypto? I mean, uh, do you think there is a way out? Uh, or for that matter, somebody trying to explain after reading the white paper that we released, saying, now I got what a crypto is. A crypto is like, 
what you have in North India, Diwali Mela, where you surrender your cash, buy the tokens, and inside you eat your chole bhatures and eat uh, play games, all using the token which runs inside that ring of the Diwali Mela. So, I mean, I, I get all kinds of crazy kind of explanations, but I mean, it's a great uh, learning and, 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 and a great kind of, I would say, experience where we are actually pushing things across uh, to say, okay, this makes sense. It's a discovery process for us as well. I mean, it, it, I, I would reckon so, right? In the sense that we're looking at things that are moving around. And like I said, there's no still target. I mean, it's moving around. Everybody's trying to grapple. And one of the things that we read a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks back was all the noise around equalization levy. There was suddenly some talk about crypto exchanges having to put an equalization levy. Then it was rolled back and said that for investors don't have to do that. So there's been a bit of back and forth on that going there as well, isn't it? Well, equalization levy has a background. I mean, first it was levied on the advertising because the local advertisement crowd felt that folks like Google or the likes were actually taking the ad revenue, not paying a single penny tax in the country. Then it came to e-commerce, if you look at it. And, and I would say e-commerce more in the services space because uh, when GST came in, if, if you are domiciled within the territorial waters of India, then you attract GST. You have to open so many offices. You have to pay 18% or 28% or whichever slab you are in. But if I keep the business outside the territorial waters of India and still sell to the same buyer and seller, that guy doesn't get taxed. So government of India has actually made my price 18 or 28% uh, costlier than my competition. So how do you rein in those people? And the government thought, I mean, we had pushed for a concept of permanent establishment. OECD and the likes and the global discussions has been around this place because people say, look, I won't pay tax in your country. I'll pay in that country. And to that country, they will say, no, 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 I won't pay in your country. I'm actually putting there where my server is. And then in the server country, you might say, okay, it's not the server, it's where the authentication and approval happens. So, I mean, this is how globally it was getting practiced. So the governments decided to meet together and say, how do we rein in this big tech guys? So maybe put equalization, maybe, maybe ask for permanent establishment. So one of the things that we felt was maybe permanent establishment is the solution, but contrary to that, the government said, okay, the equalization levy for time being, if we are not able to get them here. Uh, and in the process, equalization levy came into the e-commerce space. Now, in the crypto space, you have the Indian exchanges and you have the foreign exchanges. Now, foreign exchanges are making tons of money. Uh, the Indian exchanges are also making money. The Indian exchanges will have to pay GST, but the foreign exchanges will not have to. Uh, so there is no taxation on income for the foreign exchanges, whereas it is taxed, uh, the income is taxed in the Indian exchanges. So as a correction point, the equalization levy is the only, ex I mean, rather weapon in the hands of the government to say, okay, I'm trying to bring a level playing field there. But if you look at the application of it, yes, ideally it should not apply to investors, which has been clarified. And at the same time, obviously the transactions will still attract uh, depending on how, how it is, the income is for the foreign entity, which is not domiciled in India, but the buying and selling is happening in India. So, I mean, there are ways and means in which this particular thing has not been solved, but yes, for the time being, Equalization levy is a, a kind of a live-in kind of a scenario where we say, okay, let's let's not feel bad. I mean, for us, the level playing field definition is, if I am taxed, tax that guy. If he is not taxed, exempt me. So the government says, I can't exempt you. Let me try to tax that guy. Aritra seems to have had a chuckle on this one. How are you reading equalization levy, uh, Aritra? I mean, it's a good thing, right? I mean, Vazirex not having to pass on that 2% on to the investors. I, I love what the way Ramesh put it, I, 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 but I've just had my two cents to it. But here's the thing. I mean, uh, he, I mean, he certainly put it, uh, the entire history of it, how it came about, like why was there a need even, right? And in terms of putting juxtapose that with other industries and technologies that was happening. But having said that, we need to understand one thing very clearly that the equalization levy, this entire 2.0, which is there, I mean, it, it, it applies to selling goods and services also by a non-resident Indian, right? And also, if, if a non-resident Indian here sells goods and services to Indian residents through a digital platform who does not have a physical presence in India, it might apply. And, and you need to understand at the same time, at the same time, it has a lot of chatter that I've heard and I've seen uh, in, in the community. A lot of people just portray and, you know, uh, enclose it to the e-commerce uh, lobby, but it's not. Like, as he correctly mentioned, it has a wide range of impact. It has a massive range of impact in terms of on businesses and business models, even if businesses are not operating in India in a typical e-commerce model. But having said that, having said that, I mean, uh, I mean, there are pros and cons if you look at it that way. If we, uh, 
vis-a-vis Indian businesses and, and protectionism of them. But at, but there are additional burdens, like in terms of the, the, the costs increase. And like what the Google openly said that a couple of days ago, and they, they will put the cost back uh, to, to uh, saying uh, companies in India who are putting up ads on their platform, if you can uh, take that as an example. But see, the there is one set where I understand one set of people who say that it is uh, sort of distortionally detrimental to consumers uh, already who are uh, distressed due to the pandemic. But I also get it from a point of view of companies in India, you know, companies who are in there who want to be a part of this digital space, the entire digital consumer of a P2P space. But yeah, so it was, it came up as an interim measure long back to collect revenues and dry, uh, drive global negotiations because a lot of talk on similar equalization level was also happening in France and UK, if I'm not wrong, in terms of a digital tax. But in terms of India, I, I think there needs to be a, a, a further talk on it because taxation is great, but uh, it's like you tax NFTs. I, I, one of the things, right? You put a, a levy on NFTs also. But that entire industry has to come and play hand in hand with other parts of India as well. So I honestly think it's, it's a talk in progress, even if uh, there are rules in place, it's a, it, it's a sector and talk in progress. You know, this work in progress is an interesting concept. Right? Um, I, w- I will talk about the cryptocurrency bill in itself and uh, to take a slight comparison, right? one of the things that I've been honestly trying to understand for the last mm-hmm. couple of months is that what is the correct starting point of an acceptable cryptocurrency bill and regulation to come in place? And, and really the thought behind this is, you know, when Carl Sagan said a long time back, if you have to make an apple pie from scratch, you have to invent the universe first. Now, if you're looking at crypto regulation in India and looking at cryptocurrency bill, what are the first set of regulations that you both expect to see, which will provide the fertile ground for not only for the industry to grow well, but also to ensure that the government is seeing this as a legit thing, which can be recognized and given it the, uh, you know, the other kind of allowances that a legit industry demands usually demands. Ramesh? If you look at the... Uh... Are we in need of a bill? That's the fundamental question that starts with. Because uh, if you look at, and and do we have the capacity to absorb it the way it has been proposed? So for example, the fundamental understanding has always been that uh, this is a virtual currency. And and that's how the word currency, I mean, I, I did create a Twitter thread once on this saying, after meeting so many people in government, the fundamental thing was, hey, the word currency is there. So it means it's a currency. And therefore, we cannot have a competing currency to the rupee because legal tender in India is rupee. What if another currency starts coming? Uh, we do allow other currencies, but not in, in the man- matter of inland kind of uh, uh, currency model because rupee is the fundamental legal tender. Other currencies that we allow are backed by sovereign countries, sovereign nations, and therefore those are allowed like a dollar or a pound. We recognize those currencies. but. This is something which is neither bad nor nor we don't know what it is. Neither do the guys who deal in it ever tell us who founded it, although they tell some funny name. And that's how, I mean, I'm verbatim quoting what government guys tell me. And, 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 and therefore, I think their concerns are genuine from where they come from. They have this thing that I am the custodian of the nation. I need to safeguard. And therefore, it is important that I don't allow anything. And till capacity is built inside me, why should I have this needless kind of a headache? That's the fundamental driving point. But then, therefore, the question comes in is saying, do we need a bill? I mean, if I were to consider it as a virtual currency, I might need a bill to figure out ways and means in which it has to be driven and done. For time being, therefore, we came out with the short-term measure where we recommended in the white paper that we released from IndiaTech.org that why don't we look at it as an asset? The moment you call it an asset, what we said was, okay, here is where it is. RBI is your gatekeeper for the country. The government is the, let's assume, the RWA of your society. Now, the gatekeeper is told that, look, the people who look like, walk like, talk like, these are not allowed in the society, which is your private virtual currency. So RBI says, yes, I will not allow because I know these are uh, probably untoward characters who might come and uh, damage the ecosystem inside the society. So then the, therefore, then what happens? It is the RWA, which is in this case, the government of India. I'm dropping an RWA example because most of us during lockdown face these scenarios. But uh, the thing is that it is the RWA's job to tell, give comfort to the custodian at the gate to say, hey, these guys are allowed, but they will be told to visit only these, these areas. They will not be coming into your apartments and all. They will do the horticulture job. They will do the cleanup job. And then they will keep, they will, there'll be a timeline given. There'll be a fixed thing given. 
So I give that comfort factor. In this case, the comfort factor is say, hey, you have a problem with currency. Look, I'm giving you a comfort factor. They will not be called a currency. 90% of your insecurity is gone. Then I say, okay, once it is not a currency, I call them an asset. Then let's start seeing what all regulations existing are there for the asset, which are all there. I mean, you have right from FEMA, AML, FATF guidance, uh, accounting standards, all of them are defined for different kinds of asset. All I need to do is tweak all of this and come with something so that this guy is also living along in harmony, is not threatening. And therefore, it, it becomes a kind of a cohesive ecosystem where for now, he has been brought into the system, he or she, for gender neutrality sake. And, and therefore, from uh, that perspective, they are all living along. And as they behave and grow, we decide whether to give an apartment there in the society for them or not, which is to say in future, we give them the virtual currency status or not. But till then, we can't be saying, okay, these guys are not allowed because two things will happen. If we say you are not allowed, we already faced that with the two-year ban where the world picked it up and the world is richer than us in terms of holding crypto. But at the same time, uh, what we will miss is after five years, let's assume we realize, oh, maybe we should have jumped onto that bus or auto or whatever it was. Then we will say, okay, let's try jumping into it. They will say, sorry, it has already moved forward. You will have to run behind for uh, kilometers together to make it somewhere near. We don't want that scenario to happen either. So, and plus there are enough Indians, including millennials who have put enough money and the numbers are phenomenal, which means that tomorrow, if I shut the door, you will see panic buying. So now the world will say, oh, the Indians are now doing panic selling. Let's figure out, let it be our price, right? I mean, let, let it not come into those kind of scenarios. So there are a lot of damaging scenarios, but there is also a lot of comfort which the government has to give. Now, the bill need not be the root. Uh, and and that's, that's my kind of overall submission on this. And I know that, you know, regulation is seen as one as a good thing. I remember Nishal was talking to us a while back and he said that, you know, we, we expect regulation. Regulation is a good thing. Uh, how are you reading this, Arthur? What is the beginning or what kind of regulation do you, what kind of guidelines and frameworks do you expect to see come in first? I hear you. So here's, here's there, are, there are separate funds here where, that we need to understand and, and uh, accept. Like one, on one hand, yes, why regulations? And, and I'll come back to some of the points that Ramesh made. Why regulations, if you ask me, from a pure play investor side, if I'm an investor, I'm a 21-year-old person who's investing a decent amount of uh, wealth in that. Purely from investor protection, if I can just quote the same words that Commissioner Pierce had said at SEC a few weeks back, purely from investor protection, you need regulation in what's happening. But that is, I can say that only if we are accepting all virtual currencies as legal tender like that right now there is a second layer like can it be an asset or is it like can we have a bitcoin etf now there are few, few uh, legacy financial companies in the united states which have started uh, uh, they've actually submitted uh, uh, their proposals uh, for crypto etf that has that has already happened now is that the direction to be i mean yes why not now the way i look at it both these things in terms of club these two things as wealth creation wealth creation and one end of the funnel, you have you have investors, you have young investors, 20, 25, 30 year old investors. They need protection. They need investor protection. They need laws to help them. That's one end. The other other end, which I uh, I sort of agree with Ramesh, sir, where he uh, very rightly said, like, is is bill the end of all the issues? If you put up a bill, bill agya, sub sub problem khatam No, it's it's not that. It's not the end because you need to understand one thing. As I'm talking to you, this is what six, uh, whatever six, third, uh, few, uh, whatever time of the evening we're to uh, talking today. But he, here's the thing: crypto and virtual currencies, blockchain is something. These are these are protocols that you and me can develop, man. Like I, the three of us can sit right now and code and develop a protocol, and then we. Three developer company, we three can't go and fight key, or you need a law for this. It doesn't happen like that way. So there, this this sector is so massively developing. And when I mean it when I say that, because I've seen it with my own eyes across the world every day, I'm seeing it. There are so many different angles of this sector coming out that is immense. Having said that, do you need regulations in the current scheme of things? Probably yes. The way I look at it, uh, the chatter that I've heard across uh, um, in, 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 uh, in various circles. Yes, you do, you do need regulations for uh, so that the speculation part of it is given away. A lot of it is speculation. Oh, uh, will it be banned or will it not be banned? Should I put my money here? Should I put not? Take that away. These, these are these are your own countrymen. These are our brothers and sisters. These are our friends who are investing in this. And 
put it as an asset but have regulations in place have regulations in place for things like even if it's an asset have regulations in place for things like how do you even list a coin for example today uh, say ashwin and aritra decide to start a company and uh, we want to ipo that there are rules and regulations in place right uh, we can't just get up and sit up and say i want to ipo in india right do we have rules and regulations for that right now probably not why is not there it's it's not see it's an extremely evolving field we, we need to appreciate that aspect of this field like i am talking to you today i bet on this tomorrow morning you'll see a different protocol coming up and you'll be like oh wow this is much better than this so it, it's okay that's how technology evolves let it evolve like that but what what needs is constant debate what needs is constant uh, uh, talks in diplomatic circles which helps everybody all the players of the ecosystem understand how does it help our country grow how does it help our country grow as a regional superpower that is where you need a little bit of regulations and this space but too much regulations is also not good you can't have some you need to give some levy somewhere because this is a completely new sector so yes to summarize uh for investors the protection of investor community yes you do need regulations in place but is a build the final solution this is an evolving space like there are a lot of other layers of the build which will, will be added look at blockchain today like look at blockchain today for that matter like as i'm talking now i i got before this i got on a call i got off the call from a gentleman from it kanpur they are doing some fantastic work with uttar pradesh government and karnataka government and, and that's not even out there in the media i mean i can't officially tell you but that's not even out there in the media so there's a massive work happening at at At, at the bureaucrats at the fundamental level on the ground so is there a regulation for that no but they realize the importance of that there are is ips officers who realize the importance of that some of the there are a group of people who are working on that to get regular solutions on top of blockchain and put a layer of virtual currencies but currently there's a lot of speculation in the market uh protect the investors get a fair amount of regulation so that the industry gets a breather you go forward then there are more this more in that will happen after that is there will the more investments will be driven because of that you have a lot i'm i'm talking from a very very core if i'm a founder today i built a company called local before this that it is doing phenomenally well in the vernacular media space but can we function in an area where oh, i don't know what's going to happen it's not good like laws are there i function investment comes in you create jobs you create better technologies and who who the the ecosystem benefits the government benefits we benefits the country benefits as as an ecosystem so so that's how it is uh, talking about uh, you know all the chatter around there also been chatter about the uh, reserve bank of india mulling its own official digital currency cb central bank back oh, digital yeah. currency third <laughs> country to cbdc <laughs> having a cryptocurrency regulated by a central bank is this a good thing can this be a good thing ramesh well uh, i mean if the what the central bank digital currency is is different from what we have in the virtual currency space uh, if you look at i mean uh, this is this is an interesting thing uh, i mean post the release of the white paper interestingly i got call from around seven countries who are in various stages of regulation and in fact uh, uh, have actually added lot of pointers from the white paper into the regulation uh, in in and and these were in various stages of introduction in their parliament so it was interesting that the whole world is actually looking at solutions here and there but at the same time if you look at cbdc now there is global interest in cbdc because all the central banks around the world are now saying okay maybe it's probably an appetite for digital which is driving people to virtual currency so maybe we come with our own version it's like okay i was uh, i i was in the film roll era now let me everybody went digital so let me come with a digital camera when actually people are also already doing it because they are actually having it in their phones so i am trying to fill that appetite somewhere said maybe that digital hunger is there but i think one thing that fundamentally we are different as a country is we are already experiencing a kind of digital payment uh, scenario i mean today you your upi and all of that stuff you don't carry cash although it is in lieu of cash that you are making the transfer uh, and and that's what is happening so uh, if you look at people uh, whether it was el salvador or other countries which were dabbling in that there was a different scenario and there were they were pushing it but i think as a society we are already on to the digital scheme of things but what are central banks thinking i mean if you look at the rbi's own report recently that they launched they said there was a 2021 survey where they said 86% of the global central banks were researching on whether cbdc's potential exist and 60% of them were 
experimenting in it and something like they said something like 14 percent percent was deploying actually uh, pilot projects uh, to check which means that globally even the pilots haven't taken off the way they should have on cbdc it's a pretty pretty i would say early stage and and what are the central banks and others doing is they are saying that look we are going for cbdc because uh, maybe this is a one way to cut down on paper maybe we are increasingly seeing people more adopting electronic so the dwindling of paper currency and and kind of patronizing more digital forms of currency is what is driving people there so maybe we come with a digital form of the uh, physical cash that you had and give a give you an option where now you can trade digitally and so on and so forth so broadly speaking the cbdc concept is driven from a different motivation but presume to be uh, filling to your uh, hunger of virtual currency which is not the case uh, people should find fundamentally have that clarity in mind that that C and, and including those in government that cbdc is not why these currencies have grown uh, cbdc is i mean i mean that was the hunger and the motivation that drove most of these people to cbdcs i think that misconception has to slightly go the other thing is that of course there are various advantages that they are trying to say that we are getting into a digital payment world there are a lot of innovations happening and if and if systems are available 24 by 7 then things will work i mean there are various things being put forth by central banks but i mean underlying motivation has been always being to say that okay the next generation of crowd seems to be uh, the young crowd seems to be leaning towards more virtual forms so let's also go virtual which is which is good and bad way of looking at it good because any innovation that makes you digital is welcome uh, but at the same time the motivation should not have been saying oh those guys are digital so you are falling for it so i'll also become digital stop falling for them i mean that's that's that cannot be the primary driver for cbds as such that's a great point and i, I love i think uh, ramesh you are one of the very few people chief who have actually put it out in the open this this is a very honest assessment thank you so much for saying that you know if there is one thing out of this 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 discussion with goza this should go out absolutely because i i i really i really appreciate and i respect the fact that you said that chief but and, and he's bang on I mean, he's bang on and and people have been thinking in the completely the opposite space the moment it put it but let me add another layer let me just add another layer to that like here is cbd season here is your virtual currency world, right? Okay. Now, at the core, at the core, here's the here's the deal. At the core, you need to understand that everybody needs to understand this. CBDCs are uh, let me get this word straight. CBDCs are nothing but permissioned private blockchains. If if we can explain that sometime later, cryptocurrencies use public blockchains. This is different. These two, these two, there are, these two beats are different. I mean, see, the former is a centralized structure. The latter is not. I'm, again, I'm not. I'm not going into the debate of good, bad. Let's not go into that. I don't want to go into that. Cryptocurrency users, I'll be honest. They they, they do enjoy a certain amount of anonymity. CBDCs will their users, you know, they will tie up their identity to an existing bank account or an equal amount of personal information. Last, you know, on CBDC networks, a central bank decides everything, which is good. I'm not saying good or bad again. But on crypto networks, the authority is delegated to the user base, which makes decision making reaching a consensus. Now, I'd like to highlight one very, very critical perspective. If, if, if a CEO of a company is listening to this, if you're a young startup who's listening to this, very important, I really like to point out is that there is a word which we use a lot and which we have been using a lot called scalability. We need to understand uh, there is one very, very critical difference that we have not mentioned, scalability. Since, since uh, they run on permission networks, which is closely, they resemble like databases, Theoretically, and I'm saying theoretically, I'm not claiming anything. Theoretically, CBDCs can scale better compared to cryptocurrencies. But so far, we have not seen a massive scale example of that. So, so, let, so I'm not going into that. But on the paper, this actually happens. But see, uh, these two are different beasts, as, as Ramesh sir rightly put it. These two are very different beasts. Do they serve similar purposes? Probably not. Uh, the reasons why both of them came up, again, are very different. But yes. In, in the larger scheme of things, if you look at we are a country, this, we are going massively digital. Look at UPI. I, I'm proud when UPI, like when I go to other parts of the world and, and I don't see even a layer of UPI being there. I'm like, hey, we have UPI. Huh? What am I proud of? We have UPI from India. And I keep saying to everybody. Who, so that's something to be proud of. But at the same time, like, Ramesh put it very beautifully. These two are not the similar things. They, their motivations were different. The reasons why they are here probably 
they are different and and as i told you technologically also these are little different things but yeah so see the thing like uh, if it comes it comes i mean we can talk about it we can uh, uh, talk in the right circles and advise and take advice from people if it comes it comes so these are two very different things can they coexist yes why not you have an asset class you have a digital rupee it can coexist there's nothing that says they can't coexist uh, together so yeah and you know the bigger challenge really out here is you know taking this education out to people to help them understand yes. that these are two yes. very different things i mean it's got the you know it's got the face of a duck but it's a platypus it's not a duck in any sense of the word so yes it's it's an educational problem i just want to end that discussion with one thing and uh, every time we have an ama or we have an you know a public interaction about cryptocurrencies right a lot of people one standard staple question is is it legal which is something that i tell all our guests that listen expect this question to come 100 times but the other thing sometimes comes up is that uh, what if they shut off cryptocurrencies in india which we also try and help them understand that uh, well that possibility is a little remote but your closing thoughts on on this worry that a lot of people have when you know they are they want to invest into cryptocurrencies but they're worried that you know it will suddenly become you know it will be considered you know it will be outlawed and considered illegal what are your thoughts on these uh, ramesh if you look at the pass ban that came in uh, that was the time when people were beginning to invest in it and when the ban came in and post that the bear market happened the world picked it up and today the world is richer i had given a quote in one of the newspapers on why that difference exists between india holding so much and probably us and china having more but if you look at the question that keeps coming often is is it legit today now as i said you were banned the shutter got lifted now the animal is moving and walking around and nobody i mean it is not illegit but uh, then legitimacy is given by a regulation to say okay i name you somewhere you become legitimate right so so that naming ceremony has not happened for this animal uh, in in different regulations except that ministry of corporate affairs said that look uh, you have to disclose because 31st march happened and what if people held what will they do they will say okay we have an unnamed animal investment lying somewhere well that was not the case so they named it somewhere that doesn't mean it gave, it got legitimacy uh, but neither is it illegitimate so you have that suspended animation kind of a scenario where it is neither on earth nor on heaven uh, and but you see it daily so uh, considering that the question is therefore uh, what if there is a regulation that comes in tomorrow which bans it people will continue to and this is the fundamental problem with uh, banning right bans actually encourage gray market bans actually encourage black market bans actually encourage people to stuff things overseas then we'll go back to the same things and after some years we'll say oh now by the way indians hold so much cryptocurrencies illegally abroad i mean uh, we'll get them back right i mean it, it will happen in the same way as to why people stacked money abroad was because you had so high taxation or you had bans of a particular kind we should actually discourage bans and we should regulate it so what if we put a limit nothing wrong in that i mean as as rbi my biggest concern would be my flight of my foreign currency capital going out with people actually misutilizing it what if i put a limit to say per year you can invest so much lrs regulations okay this is what is permissible let me make that clear at least we will know what to comply with i think it's easily doable in terms of simple regulations a ban will actually make legitimate people illegitimate uh, i mean get into illegitimate kind of activities and so on so that's my conclusion unintended consequences <laughs> artra i mean uh, i i'm just admiring what he's saying man he's just saying the right things he's just hitting the right corners uh, ravish sir but here's the thing it's psychological i mean it's psychological it's it's something that we are born with this is not rocket science guys i tell you today ashwin ashwin if your mother tells us if our mothers used to tell us ye mat karo don't do this what would we do we'll do that no? we'll if we we'll go there we'll go there it's psychological man i mean it that 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 had to do with law or what it it's like generations ahead of us have been have been inbred like this you say no to us we'll i'll go there you don't tell me to wear a helmet i mean i wear a helmet by the way you told you don't told in you tell india to wear a helmet half of them will not wear a helmet so it's the thing but as he as sir rightly put it out here's the thing it's it's like the online gaming space the, the, the rummy and all of that right i mean it's not legal it's not illegal it's a gray area so as as and i know i'm speaking on behalf of uh, wazirx uh, but i'm also the way i look at it there are lovely there are a lot of amazing companies in this country exchanges who do incredible work 
if you are an investor uh getting into crypto do invest there's there's no problem right now do invest but that the only thing i say to everybody this is not not just about crypto but it's about investment in general it's about the idea of invest in investing in general you compare our country you compare how young the country is when you compare our investment and the total number of people who invest versus the total number of people who invest in other countries oh jesus there's a stark difference there's a massive difference so we as as a country uh, uh, we 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 not we, the massive amount the massive number of people in the country are not traditional investors they still they go to regular things like the fixed deposits of the world there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that ideology you do that those are safe investment methods but there are a lot of other ways you can compound your wealth and it's your right to compound your wealth in a lot of other ways so there's the regular stock market there's the regular the bond market there's a the regular crypto market again i know we started this conversations with bringing in regulations we need regulations to protect us all of us because we are all investors that's why uh, everybody looks after us like the sebi rbi everybody looks up after all of us the same thing it would be great eventually after all these talks that we doing with each other with the government with equal stakeholders we make some leeway in terms of regulations which protects us so in terms of investments yes if 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 you have a 20% or 10% of your wealth to invest do that if you're a regular salaried person do that invest in this but there is a word of caution i've heard a lot of and i'm sure you guys have heard of a lot of stories more more than me but i've a lot of heard a lot of horror stories as well when it comes to investments and all of that so be careful don't invest all your money in such things invest what you are ready to lose and that's nothing to do with crypto or stock it's a thing it's this an analogy works everywhere and, and why not it's a great it's a great field compound your wealth there's nothing wrong with that so so i'll leave it on that that front but yeah we're all looking forward for positive regulations which protects us all of us as investors well i uh, meant to that thanks for that that's well you know talking about sticking to stipulations and rules and regulations i was given 30 minutes and i've already overshot that and i have a lot more questions considering you you guys opened a can of worms the kind of questions that i want to ask but if you're watching guys and you have a lot of questions about you know just the things we're talking about cryptosphere on the business insider cryptocurrency page is the forum where you can go in and drop your questions in and we have experts around the field who are happy to help you to understand this space better so that you can make an informed choice and you can understand the landscape it much better and uh, we're going to be back with more such sessions we'll be back with ramesh we'll be back with aritra to help you understand all the things that you've always been puzzled with so that like you hear before you can make a prudent decision on how you want to proceed in this domain on that note ramesh aritra gentlemen it's been a delight to have you with us and we're going to have you back very soon because like i said we opened a can of worms there's so much to discuss out here and the biggest challenge perhaps in this space is helping people understand and really understanding the concepts the fundamentals that underlay over here so that we can proceed and build up on that so thanks gentlemen it's been a delight to have you both pleasure lovely talking to you ashwin thanks ashwin